This demonstration presents an iOS-like swipe navigation in a JavaFX application. When the app starts up, a main content view is displayed. Hovering toward the top of the view shows a visual indicator that an additional function is available. Dragging down from the top brings up an additional view called the overlay content. Releasing anywhere toward the lower half of the screen places the overlay content completely over the main content. If the dragging is not initiated from the top of the form, overlay content is not displayed. If the release point of the drag is in the upper half of the main content view, overlay content is again hidden. A few other features. The hiding and showing of the overlay content is animated. Rather than simply appearing and disappearing, the showing action progresses to take up the full screen or shrinks to hide itself. There is a direction indicator at the base of the overlay content that changes based on its mode. Scrolling off the end of the screen skips the animation. We'll start by looking at Scene Builder. Scene Builder is essential for the JavaFX workflow to support rapid development. While presenting a UI to your client or boss, you can make WYSIWYG adjustments and walk out of a meeting with a verified piece of code instead of just a list of to-dos. While you can make quick adjustments in code during a review process, you'll make syntax or layout errors that will cause your client or boss to lose patience in the process. So I do as much work in Scene Builder and CSS as possible. Hook in a style sheet using Window Scene Style Sheets Add a Style Sheet. In this app, I'm navigating between two views, Main Content and Overlay Content. Both views are contained in a stack pane. To work with the bottommost view in Scene Builder, I temporarily make the topmost view invisible. For the main content, I use a centered V-box to hold a label. You may recall from the demo that there was a border on this component. That's something I've left for code and it's not part of the FXML file. For the overlay content, I use a V-box, but this is centered to the bottom. That's so I can add the arrow indicator at the bottom. What I'm doing in overlay content is fixing the height of the bottom arrow V-box then wrapping up the overlay content, which is a label, in a V-box that will take up the remaining space. That V-box, the one containing the overlay content label, is centered. There is a stack pane that contains two V-boxes, main content and overlay content. In code, I'm going to start with the overlay content off the screen, then slide it over main content along with a mouse drag. Now let's look at the code. At the top of main content, there is a border that is shown when the user hovers to the top of the view. I toggle the border property of main content between two borders, top highlight border, which is a gradient, and top empty border, which is no border. This action is initiated in an event filter assigned to the outermost container stack pane. If the mouse position is at the top, less than or equal 20 pixels, and overlay content is not showing, use the highlight, otherwise don't display a border. Here is the code that creates the highlight border. It is a thick line with a three-stop gradient. Here is the code that creates the empty border. Overlay content starts off the screen fully translated upward by the screen height. To start the drag action, I make sure that the last operation was started from a mouse press at the top of the main content. I save off last Y press, which will be used as a filter in the other drag operations. The drag operation will adjust both up and down the translate Y property of overlay content. There is a guard clause that will prevent the view from rolling off the bottom, exposing main content's top part. 
When the mouse is released, the program decides whether or not the release occurred in the top or bottom half of the screen. If it occurred in the top half, the translate Y property will be reset to the inverse of the screen height via an animation. If the release occurred in the lower half, the translate Y property will be set to zero via an animation. I record the state of the overlay showing to allow subsequent operations for reinstating the main content. Here is the code for the animation, which will be used to both show and hide the overlay content. These days, be sure to animate everything. JavaFX and SceneBuilder lack programming constructs like iOS's swipe gesture to make this program trivial. However, with a set of top-level event filters, you can build your own gesture recognizer by keeping track of the drag operations. The hover show hide pattern is widely adopted in everything from iPads and iPhones to Windows 10. Traditional pull downs may still be in play, but customers are going to view navigation like that presented in this post as more intuitive.